Today we're going to be making a project out of eggs. Well, mainly just the shell and maybe some resin, which means today's video is going to be excellent. And since it's only the shell, that's snow yolk. <laughs> Dumb egg jokes aside, I actually did just stumble on this idea accidentally. Crux of the idea starts with eggshells. I think this is two weeks worth of eggs um, from various things, mostly breakfasts. Got some hot water here. If you've ever dyed eggs for Easter, you know there's not a whole lot to it. Obviously the browns go through a lot of eggs in a week and a half. A few tablespoons of white vinegar. These are just regular old food coloring dyes. And we want to use an insane amount of dye. We want really bright, bright blue on our eggshells. Perfectly normal concoction. Well, it's been a uh, 15, 20 minutes and they're foaming. I don't remember this happening in my Easter dying days. We need to weight them down. Luckily, I made a weight years ago. That should just be perfect for this. Those of you who have been watching long enough know that the process is never simple. Invariably, I'll discover something wrong. And that's what's happened here. 50% of you are going to be like, oh yeah, that's egg membrane. And you got to remove that if you want to get to the inside shell. It's impeding the dyeing process for the inside. The outsides are dying, but the insides have this, this stuff on them. The other 50% of you are going to be like me and I didn't know that that was there. Did you know that eggs had a membrane on the inside that the shell stuck to? No. I asked our daughter and she said she definitely knew that. We might be the only two people on the planet that didn't know that. <laughs> uh, but there's still a lot of large pieces here. And I'm basically still just trying to remove as much of them as possible. I think we're going to be okay, even though this is definitely a lot more tedious than I expected it to be. Anyway, I'd say we're pretty close. There's not much left down here. Eggshells in there, but they all just stayed in the bottom here for whatever reason. Cool. And we definitely want this completely dry before we try to put it in resin. And now this is going to be a bracelet and typically my bracelets have a hole in the middle. Everybody's does, Peter. I was going to say the size, but I couldn't remember the size. I probably should at some point make an actual bracelet mold. It seems to work pretty well and it's really easy. For those of you wondering why I didn't just use the bottom, it's not quite big enough for the bracelet, um, but this top flares out. One of the other reasons I really like using clear acrylic is that you can inspect your glue and see if you've got any points that... Some crow is out there criticizing me. Yes, I see the hole. Thank you, crow. And then I turn this little chunk of wood here on the lathe and that's just going to sit right in the middle there. Just kind of eyeball. I hit that with some mold release. And we can put that to the side. Let's mix up some resin. Today we're going to be using a Thick Set Fathom from Total Boat. I don't think it's going to take a huge amount of resin. Part A will go to the first three, and Part B will go to that second three there, which should give us the right ratio for this. Go ahead and add a drop of blue dye. Get a nice light blue color there. And 
And adding a bit of dye also helps to counteract any of the yellowing effect that we get. And then I guess I guess we just start putting in eggshells, right? So we want the eggshells just all around here. I've got a lot more eggshells than I thought I had. I didn't think this was going to be enough eggshells, but um, I've only used about half of them so far. I'm keeping one glove on for the resin. <laughs> I'm keeping one glove off so I can hold on to the eggshells without getting resin on them. If you've ever, if you've ever battered and fried chicken, um, I'm using the exact same. We're basically a cooking show. I've said it before, we're basically a cooking show. No leaks, nothing's leaking out. There's a, ooh, there's a fly on the camera. I'm going to get it, I hope. <sighs> Sorry, small pleasures. I'm just going to pour a little bit more resin over the top because Fathom tends to shrink a little as it cures. So this will mean that it continues to cover everything. I'd like to thank BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. I, I struggle with anxiety. I struggle with panic attacks. And sometimes I find them overwhelming. And those feelings can trigger other emotions like anger or sadness or depression. And you might not even realize that those two things are related. And you might have this voice in your head that tells you you're broken and you don't deserve to be helped. But that voice is lying to you. There's help out there. And I'm here to tell you that the process of therapy works. But the idea of picking a random stranger in your town, marching yourself down to their office and bearing your soul to them, is certainly not going to calm any feelings of anxiety you might already be feeling. And that's why I'm excited to tell you about today's sponsor, BetterHelp. BetterHelp's mission is to make therapy more accessible and affordable. And that's important because finding a therapist can be hard, like really hard. BetterHelp is a platform that makes finding a therapist easier because it's online, it's remote, and by filling out a few questions, you could easily be matched to a therapist in as little as a few days. And look, if you don't really fit with that therapist, you can easily switch to a new one at no additional cost and without stress. So if you're struggling, consider online therapy from BetterHelp. Simply click the link in the description below or visit betterhelp.com forward slash Peter Brown for 10% off your first month of therapy from BetterHelp. And thank you again, BetterHelp, for continuing to support this channel. I almost forgot I've got a new sticker for the pressure pot. Look at that. That's super cool. The inside of the pressure pot is becoming high-end real estate now. I, I have high hopes for this little... Where's the lid? How's this going to turn out? It's certainly interesting looking. <clears throat> I did have some leftover resin after pouring this, and so I added some of this gold leaf into a block, and I was curious how that turned out as well. That actually looks pretty neat too. If you guys are interested, let me know. We can do something with it. It's not a huge blank, but you can probably get something out of it. But this one, I got plans for you. I feel like we just broke through. So now we've got a hole in the middle here two and five eighths inches. It's called a jam chuck. It's what I use for making my bracelets. Tenon right here should equal the same size as the hole we drilled. 
Okay, it's a little jagged, so I'm actually pushing my fingers into this. And that's just jammed in place. Today I'm going to be using my Easy Wood tools for this. One of the reasons I really like these, because they've got these negative rate cutters you can get for them here, and uh, it works really well with resin. Let's try that again, but with the tailstock up this time. Alright, that is turning, that is turning beautifully. Um, I'm getting a smell I wasn't expecting. It's a mild sulfur smell, which makes sense, I think, for the eggshells. Definitely what I'm looking for to get back here to the face. Add a little blue tape here. So that's just one layer of blue tape. Should be enough. This material is actually turning beautifully. I can't remember the last time I turned something that didn't fight me the whole time. Still trying to keep shavings, so we'll have these. Um, got a pretty decent surface already off the tools, so I'm going to jump in and start at 240. And I'll go from 240, 320, 400, 600, and 800. Kind of the downside is now I have to pop this off, flip it around and do the other side. I did this on the laser. I made a short on me and I asked everybody if they would rather me just not say it anymore. And I was told in no uncertain terms that I had to keep saying it. Micromesh is its own grit system. It starts at 1500, goes through to 12,000. Just progress through the pads and you'll get a nice finish. And again, just like with sanding, um, that face there that's up against the chuck, I'll have to flip this around and go through all the grits again on that side. Eggshell bracelet. The process was fun. It's something I'd never seen before, and the end result is very interesting. As far as projects go, what more could you ask for? It's a minor chaos. I tell you, I was a little nervous when it fell off the lathe right in the beginning. Found this project while I was randomly scrolling through the Instructables website. I'll put a link down in the description for that Instructable. They did a ring and I was like, I wonder what it would look like a little bigger. It, it kind of reminds me of the Secret Wood projects. You've got the material in the resin and then there's parts where the material is very thin and you can see through it. And the other thing that's really interesting is the color is really strong on the outside and the inside, but when you cut through it, you've got that very distinct white band. I don't know why. <laughs> Besides the membrane, it was fairly easy. That was unbelievably tedious. That took me hours to get all of that off of there. Probably two hours to remove all the membranes from there. My back was on fire after being hunched, hunched over the bowl, <laughs> peeling off the membrane. But, um, but it was worth it. It's totally worth it. If you've got a suggestion for how to get rid of that membrane easier, I'll take it. I can't feel the shells through the resin. Ultra smooth, it polishes up beautifully with the micro mesh. This is a near perfect project. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. As far as I'm concerned, this project turned out excellent.